Paul Tara suffering. And having seen our misery, having heard our cry, and having been so much concerned about our suffering, now God decides to face it off with the enemy, and God decides to fight your enemy directly. Now, when the battle increases in your life, my brother and my sister, when battles multiply in your life, then you need to know that the Lord is ready to fight all of them. The more the battles, the more the victories, and the greater is the reward. We have also appreciated that Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God, is the commander of the army of God, and he did appear to Joshua as a man standing with a drawn sword, ready to fight. And he says, I am the commander of the army of the Lord, or I have come as the commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. The commander shows up in battles, even for brethren, with a drawn sword, shows that he is ready to fight. As Joshua surrendered to the commander of the army of the Lord, and later witnessed extraordinary victory for the children of Israel, so should you and me surrender in all our battles, we should surrender to Jesus Christ, and we are going to experience unprecedented victory in our lives in the name of the Lord. I want to share with you the great assurance that we have even when we are in battle. When we are in battle, there is a great assurance from the book of Isaiah, chapter 54, verse 17. And this is what the Bible says, Isaiah chapter 54, verse 17. No weapon that is far from against thee shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. My brother and my sister, our enemy Satan and his agents wage war against the saints continually. And the journey of faith is not a joy ride. It is not a journey free of trouble. It is not an easy journey. It is not a, a trouble free journey, but it is a journey full of battles and full of troubles. It is not easy. The ultimate goal of Satan is actually to destroy us. I want to tell you, my brother and my sister, that the devil is not in some sort of games with saints. The devil actually means business when he is attacking you or he is attacking me. He is a little adversary and is seeking to devour the saints. The Bible says that we should be aware and we should be sober because they are our adversary, the devil, roams around or wanders around and like a rolling lion seeking someone to devour. So he is actually launching vicious attacks against the, the, the saints, and his aim is to destroy them. So the journey of faith is a journey of battle. But once we allow the commander of the army of the Lord to take over uh, our battles, our struggles, our heartaches, our difficult uh, times, then none of Satan's weapons is going to prosper in our lives in Jesus' name. That is the assurance that we have. When God says none, he means absolutely none. It does not matter how it is fashioned or how it is formed, but none of them will prosper or will stand. Even the most dreaded enemy is nothing before God. When God sends his messenger, when God sends uh, his commander with a gold sword, the commander is wielding a superior weapon, has drawn a superior weapon, superior to all other weapons that are fashioned against our lives, against our business, against our families, against our jobs. And the Bible uh, continues to say in Isaiah chapter 55 verse 17, in the last phrase, the second last phrase, this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. That is the heritage we have in God. As many as serve God, they have a special heritage. And what is the heritage? That no weapon fashioned against them shall ever prosper. So we have a, a requirement that we need to be 
serving God for that to be our heritage or our portion. Whom do you serve, my brother and my sister? You cannot claim an inheritance that is not due to you. It can only be due to you if you serve the Lord. I want us to look at various ways that God uses to fight. So that when God is fighting in our lives, we can and know that surely God is at work. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 7. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 7. This is what uh, the Bible says. The Lord will cause your enemies who rise against you to be defeated before your face. They shall come out against you one way and flee before you seven ways. The Lord will cause your enemies who rise against you to be defeated before your face. They will come out against you one way and will flee before you seven ways. This is one of the blessings that were promised to the children of Israel subject to their obedience to the commands of the Lord. Because the Lord says, if you shall obey, he starts by telling them, if you shall obey the commands that I've given to you this day, then a number of blessings are listed. And in verse 7, this particular blessing is listed. It is a blessing, my brethren and my sisters, to see your enemies being defeated in your face. And even being scattered completely. Being scattered completely. Because the, the being scattered in seven ways actually means being scattered completely or totally. But you are required, my brother and my sister, to live in obedience to God for this to be your portion. I have seen many a brethren claim this uh, portion and claim this promise that no report fashioned against me shall ever prosper. But if you look back, you find that these people are not actually serving God. They are serving their interest or they are serving other people's interest. But this heritage is for the servants of God. Your enemy will come in one battle alley. They will come as one man to you. They will come as one man to you. But what the, uh, the Lord is promising, that they will be scattered in seven ways. That means that none of the soldiers of the army of your enemy will ever know where his colleague has gone. In other words, they will go helter skelter. They will be confounded and they will be rooted in your presence in Jesus' name. That is your heritage, child of God. In Psalms 68, verse 1, this is a psalm of David, also called a choir, or a, I mean a song of David also, for the choir director. And this is what he says. Let God arise, let his enemies be scattered. Let also them that hate him flee before him. Let God arise, let his enemies be scattered. Let them also that hate him free before him. My brother and my sister, God scatters the enemies, but he does that when he is allowed to do. Because the scripture says in verse 1 of Psalm 68, let God arise. That means that you have the option of not letting God to arise in your life. When he appeared to Joshua, we see Joshua, we see the, uh, the commander standing with a drawn sword before Joshua and Joshua actually let God arise. And how did he let God arise? He let God arise by humbling himself. Because the Bible say, says that he fell face down and worshipped when he realized that he is being uh, visited by the Lord. We let God arise by surrendering before him in our troubles. Is what rises or what you allow to arise in your troubles? What arises in your battles, my friend? What arises in your battles? Is it your voice? Some of us raise our voices more than our faith. The decibels of our voice are higher than our faith in God. What arises in your battles? Is it your harsh words and your tough words? Do you look for tough vocabularies in trouble? Or do you seek God and let Him arise? Is it your connections that arise in your troubles? Is it your powerful relatives that 
arise in your troubles? Who arises in your troubles? I entreat you today by God. From today onwards, my brother and my sister, let God arise. Only let God arise in your life. And when you do that, then your enemies will be scattered completely in the name of the Lord. Now, you need to know, my brother and my sister, that when you are in God, then your enemies are God's enemies. Your enemies are God's enemies. In Exodus chapter 23, verse 22, this is what the Bible says. Exodus chapter 23, verse 22. But if you shall indeed obey this voice and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy unto thy enemies and an adversary unto thy adversaries. If my brother and my sister, you are a friend of God, then your enemies are God's enemies. They immediately become God's enemies. Those who rise against you, those who uh, fight you, actually fight God. Those who rise against you, rise against God. Those who speak against you, speak against God. Because you have become a friend of God. And how you become a friend of God? Jesus said an answer to, uh, to this. John chapter 15, verse 14. This is what Jesus says. You are my friends if you do what I have commanded. You are my friends if you do what I have commanded. When you are obedient before God and you observe that what God has commanded and you live in holiness, you live uprightly in your life, then you become a friend of God. And when you are a friend of God, then your enemies become his enemies. And this is what he promised the children of Israel, subject to their obedience, subject to their obedience to God's voice, then their enemies will turn to be God's enemies. And if that be the case, then God will fight his enemies. And these enemies are your enemies. In the process of fighting his enemies, he'll be fighting your enemies also in the name of the Lord. Expect God to arise. If you are his friend. I know for sure that when your friend is being attacked even in normal life, you feel like you are being attacked yourself. And you find yourself defending your friend. You find yourself fighting for your friend. How much more with our God? Our God will fight your enemies and he will scatter them. He will arise and scatter them in the name of the Lord. Praise be to the name of Jesus. Another way that God uses to fight, we have seen that number one, he uses, he fights by scattering our enemies. That is one method he uses. He just scatters them. And they go helter skelter. They don't even uh, know where their colleagues are. They just go helter skelter. They are scattered. And they, they wander away and they go away in your presence. Then another way that God uses to fight uh, for us is that he fights, he strikes the enemy with brightness. The Lord can strike the enemy with brightness. God can fight for you by striking your enemies with brightness so that they don't find their way to come and attack you or destroy you. 2 Kings chapter 6 verse 18 we see a very interesting scenario here where uh, Elisha, the servant of God, was actually giving intelligence uh, to the king of Israel concerning the uh, Aram uh, Aramean uh, army and the king of Arameans, whenever they were planning to go and uh, attack Israel or waylay them, then Elisha would uh, guide them, would guide the king of Israel not to follow a particular way because they would be attacked. And when the uh, Aramean king had this, the Bible says that he was so enraged, he was very much annoyed and wanted to, wanted to know who is this traitor among us? Who is telling the king of Israel our plans or is disclosing our plans to the king of Israel? Then one of them told him, there is a man of God, Elisha, in Israel who tells the king of Israel everything you say even in your bedroom. And the king was so enraged. And therefore he, he sent people to go and capture Elisha. And when he sent people to go and capture Elisha, in 2 Kings chapter 6 verse 18, 
We hear this is what Elisha did. As the enemy came down, 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 18. As the enemy came down towards him, Elisha prayed to God, Strike this army with brightness. So he struck them with brightness as Elisha had asked. And this enemy or this army that had been sent because it was a strong and mighty army with chariots that had just gone to capture only one man. But Elisha, the servant of God, prayed, God, strike this army with brightness. And the Bible says, they were confused and they could not find Elisha. They were talking to him and they could not identify him. They were not able to capture him as had been planned. Praise be to the name of the Lord. It is possible that God can do the same for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Genesis chapter 19, verse 9 to 11. We have another case where some enemies were struck with brightness. And we are just going to read verse 9 to 11. Genesis chapter 19, verse 9 to 11. It was, it is a, an account that is put, uh, that is recorded in the Bible where there was a lot of evil in Sodom. And when the two angels had gone to destroy Sodom, and there were those evil men of that, of that area that wanted to come to Lot's house and abuse the men who had come there. And when Lot tried to protect these men, in verse 9 to verse 11, this is what happened. This is now Lot speaking to these evil men of the city of Sodom. Get out of the way. They replied, these are the evil men. And they declared, this one came here as a foreigner. And here he is already acting as a judge. Now we will treat you worse than them. And they pressed in a lot, and they pressed in on in on Lot and moved in to break the door, to break down the door. But the men, who are the angels, of course, the men inside reached out and put Lot into the house with them and shut the door. And they struck the men at the entrance, young and old with brightness, so that they were so that they worried themselves trying to fight the door. Praise be to the name of Jesus. This was God again acting and fighting for his servant by, fight, by striking the enemies with brightness. And they were not able to fight Lord and fight their way. And after that, Lord was rescued from that evil city of Sodom. When you realize in your life that your enemy is crossing in on you, it's just about to corner you and, 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 and encircle you. It's just closing in on you. Then you can, and almost catching you, you can ask God as a righteous pray, strike them with brightness. And God is able to do exactly the same. I want to tell you, my brother and my sister, that God is able to pray for your enemy or your adversary or the, uh, or the, the agent of your enemy with brightness or pray for them so that they are not able to find any loophole to put you into trouble. If you realize that it's a certain loophole, even in your place of work or wherever you are, wherein you are about to be cornered and you are about to be put in trouble, ask God to strike whoever is trying to hunt you with blindness and that will happen in Jesus' name. They will not be able to find their way to come and destroy you because you are a friend of God and you are a child of God. Glory be to the name of Jesus. And the other way that God would use is that he can wage war. He can wage war. He can send his angels to wage war against your enemies and protect you. We see in, um, in 2 Kings chapter 19 verse 34, uh, a case where God actually sent uh, his angel to fight uh, against the enemies of the king of, of Judah. And we find that King Hezekiah, who was the king of Judah, was the best king that ever lived or ever ruled Judah. The Bible says there, were not, there wasn't such a king that was so right. For the Bible says that he did what was right and righteous uh, before God. He even destroyed idolatry in Judah. And the evil king of Assyria doubted him one time and said, where is your protection? God cannot protect you. He even blasphemed the living God and even told that you told Ezekiah and uh, his messengers, you are trusting in your God in vain. He even told the servants of Ezekiah, don't let Hezekiah deceive you that your God is going to save you. And he said, I have destroyed many kings 
and they are God never saved them. Who is this God that is going to deliver uh, to deliver you or save you? And at a certain time, he sent a, le a letter to Hezekiah, full of ridicule and insults and threats against Hezekiah and the people of Judah. King Hezekiah, after receiving the letter, he went to the temple of God and prayed the letter before God. And he made a prevailing prayer before God. He cried to God. He cried to God in pain. And as he cried to God, God used prophet Isaiah to come and assure the king that God is going to fight for them in the name of the Lord. He actually came and assured him, uh, prophet Isaiah came and came and assured uh, Hezekiah not to fear the king of Assyria because God is going to fight him and is going to bring him down. Prophet Isaiah told Hezekiah also that God has heard your prayer. God has heard your prayer. And Isaiah concluded his message to King Hezekiah in 2 Kings chapter 19 verse 34. And this is what he says. For I will defend this city to save it for my own sake and for my servant David's sake. For I will defend this city to save it for my own sake and for my servant David's sake. Praise be to the name of Jesus. This is what Isaiah had to tell uh, the king uh, of Judah. And Isaiah and, and King Hezekiah was assured. But that same night, after uh, Isaiah had given the message to King Hezekiah, in verse 35, that night, 2 Kings chapter 19, verse 35 to 36, that night, the angel of, uh, of the Lord went out and put to death 185,000 in the Assyrian camp. When the people got up the next morning, there were all the dead bodies. And that is it. So uh, Senachelbim, king of Assyria, broke up and withdrew. He returned to Nineveh and stayed there. Now later, this king uh, of, of Assyria, Senachelbim, was actually killed while he was worshipping his idols in one of the temples. He was killed and clear and his son took over the leadership of Assyria. God can also fight for you even though you are asleep. Because the Bible says God did, did, did this at night. At times when the sun is going down and we feel like we need the day to work more and to, to work out things, I want to tell you even when you are asleep, God can still fight for you. God fought for King Hezekiah while everybody else was asleep. And when they woke up, they found a lot of victory in the name of the Lord. The third way that God would use to fight uh, you for you or fight the enemy is that he can cause confusion in the enemy's camp. God can cause confusion to your enemy. In Joshua chapter 10 verse 8 to 12, we see uh, something here. When Joshua uh, was attacking, was about to attack the Amorites, the Amorites had heard about the conquest of Jericho and the conquest of Ai. And they therefore prepared themselves. They looked for other uh, five kings to be their allies so that they can fight one nation of Israel. And they were so afraid of Joshua. And they were they say that they had heard what Joshua had done in Jericho and Ai. Therefore they were so much afraid. And when Joshua knew that they had gathered and there were many, they had gathered, the Amorites had gathered many other kings. This is what the Lord says to Joshua in Joshua chapter 10, verse 8 to 12. Verse 8, the Lord says to Joshua, Do not be afraid of them. I have given them, given them into your hand. No, not one of them will be able to withstand. I have given all of them into your hands. Not one of them will be able to withstand. Then verse 9, after an all-night march from Gilgal, Joshua took them by surprise. Joshua took them by surprise. Then verse 10, the Lord threw them into confusion. The Lord threw them into confusion before Israel. So Joshua and Israel defeated them completely at Gibeon. Israel pursued them along the road, 
going to Beth Haron and cut them down all the way to Azekah and Mekada. Verse 11. As they fled before Israel on the road down from uh, Beth Haron to Azekah, the Lord held large hailstones down on them, and more of them died from the hailstone than were killed by swords of the Israelites. Praise be to the name of the Lord. We see a case here where many people have gathered, or many, um, uh, many armies are gathered from many nations against one nation, Israel. And they thought that by their Irish and by the strength of their, of their army, they will be able to fight and defeat Joshua and his army. But now, the Lord does something interesting. God throws them into confusion and they start fleeing. They start fleeing from Joshua. And as they are fleeing, then the Lord sends the hailstone upon them. So that though Joshua and his army had already cleared a number with their sword, God now intervenes and brings hailstones upon these enemies so that they die more than to are killed by the hailstone but than, than the sword. So that Joshua and the Israelites may not think that they have been delivered by their sword, but by God Himself. In 1 Samuel chapter 14, verse 20, we see another account here. Jonathan had already decided to go and attack the Philistine outpost. And after he had done that attack, God gave him initial victory against the enemy. And that initial victory threw the enemy into confusion. And in 1 Samuel chapter 14, verse 20, this is what the Bible says. Then Saul and all his men assembled and went to the battle. They found the Philistines in total confusion, striking each other with their swords. My brothers, my brothers and my sister, my sisters, when God is fighting for you, He can throw your enemies into confusion. They may even start turning against one another and forget that you are the target, you are the original target, and they will just start fighting against one another. All in the enemies in your life, my brother and my sister, God is able to throw them into confusion so that they turn against each other in the name of the Lord. Could it be in your place of work? Could it be in your business? Could it be in your family? Wherever you are, all those enemies, God is able to throw them into confusion so that they forget about you and they start fighting one another. This is what happened in the case of Jonathan. All the enemies of the people of God, the Philistines, they were thrown into, the confu into confusion. The Bible says it was total confusion and they started striking one another. Another way God can do, can use to fight for you is that he can cause the enemy to panic. God can cause the enemy to panic. In 1 Samuel chapter 14, verse 15 to 20, we see that in verse 15, when we read verse 15, we don't need to go to verse 20 because we've already read it, we read to verse 16. Then the panic struck the whole army, those in the camp and field, and those in the outpost and raiding parties, and the, and the ground shook. It was a panic sent by God. Saul's, uh, Saul lookout at Gibeah in, in Benjamin saw the army melting away in all directions. My brother and my sister, the Bible says, this was panic sent by God. It is the same story that we are reading about uh, Jonathan uh, war expedition, when he attacked the Christian's outpost. And these people were thrown into confusion. They were also uh, having panic. The panic was sent by God. Such panic that made the ground even shake. And the Bible says that the people who are uh, at the watchtower or the lookouts for Saul at Gibeah in Benjamin saw the armies melting away in all directions. Beloved, when God sends panic to your enemies, when God sends panic to your enemies, they will just melt away. There will be no fight. They will just melt away in your presence. God may make your enemies to melt away. Just the same way ice melts at the heat of the sun rays. The ice melts and it disappears. The same way your enemies will disappear and melt away in your presence in the name of the Lord. When you place a block of ice outside in the hot sun, you will see it just vanishing and melting away. 
You don't need to do anything to it. That is what the, the, the Lord will do to your enemies. They will just melt away because of the panic that the Lord is going to send in the name of the Lord. Glory be to the name of Jesus Christ. I know that some of us are facing diverse kind of battles and difficulties in our life. We require that God may use any of his ways to fight for us in Jesus name. And therefore it is important that we be friends of God and we obey what he has said. And thereafter, God will use any of his ways to fight for us in the name of the Lord. In conclusion, my brother and my sister, I want to declare again according to the assurance that we got uh, when we started, the assurance that we have in God, which we also say in Isaiah chapter uh, 54 verse 17, is the heritage of the sons of God or those who serve God. No weapon fashioned against you shall prosper. This is the heritage of you if you serve God. God is ready to fight all your battles in Jesus' name. He is not scared of your enemy. He has never been scared of any enemy. He is not scared of the threats that are coming from your enemy. He is ready to face your enemy today in the name of the Lord. As I told you, God has never lost any battle. God has never shown the enemy his back. He confronts the enemy head on. Friend of God, you who obey God, know today and remember today that your enemy becomes God's enemy. Your battle is God's battle. Let God arise in your life. Let God arise in your life. And therefore, your enemies are going to be scattered totally in Jesus' name. He will give them what we call a total scatter, complete scatter in the name of the Lord. They go, they come in one way that they know, but God will make them scatter in seven ways, total scatter in your presence. This is your portion of blessings that is tied to your obedience to God's work. God is able to strike your enemies with brightness so that they don't fight their way to come and attack you and finish you and destroy you. God is able to throw them into confusion though they had done all their plans and the plans that are just about to be executed. God is able to confuse them so that they cannot remember their plans anymore and they will fight, they will start fighting against each other in Jesus' name. God is able to send panic to them. Though you may not look like you are that strong, but a panic from the Lord is able to make your enemies melt in your presence in Jesus' name. It is not by power, not by might, but by the Spirit of God. They will melt away, not because you have done anything, but because God has sent his own panic upon their lives in Jesus' name. I want you to join me in prayer and I want you to believe God. I don't know what battles you are facing, but can you let God arise today in Jesus' name? Let God arise today in the name of the Lord. As you give your offering and your time, just know that this is one way of, uh, of honoring God. It's one way of being obedient and God will truly fight your battles in the name of Jesus. And I want to tell you something. When you are obeying God, be sure that this uh, portion of the scripture that I've read, this assurance is going to be your heritage in the name of Jesus. Therefore, God bless you so much. The number you are going to send to is on the screen. It's 0703-186-284. 0703-186-284. And kindly when you send, indicate what kind of uh, an offering you are doing. Is it uh, a love offering? Is it a um, time? Whatever it is, please kindly indicate and God will bless you. We are continuing to worship God uh, with this song. Uh, your presence is a heaven to me and God will bless all of us. Shalom and may God bless you and do you good in Jesus name. Amen. Shalom.